Salam Sajatra. In this video, we will give you a comparison between international humanitarian law and the international human rights law. International humanitarian law is defined as a set of rules which seek for humanitarian reasons to limit the effect of armed conflict. It protects persons who are not or no longer participating in the hostilities and restricts the means and methods of warfare. The law applies only once a conflict has begun, and then equally to all sides, regardless of who started the fighting. It is also a set of rules defining the conduct and responsibilities of belligerent nations, neutral nations, and individuals engaged in warfare, in relation to each other and to protected persons. In the aftermath of the Second World War, the UN was created in 1945. And in December 10, 1948, the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights came into being. It was established by the UN General Assembly. Human rights is defined as the rights that a person have simply for being human, referring to rights that provides a level of freedom or minimum standard of living as humans. Human rights is defined as rights that a person have simply for being human, referring to rights that provides a level of freedom or minimum standard of living as humans. Human rights are internationally recognized standards and values that are given to each human being irregardless of age, color, status in life, origin, race or ethnicity or education. These rights must therefore be upheld by the government and all other institutions and individuals that are bound to protect these rights. It also refers to freedom to do certain activities, freedom from certain conditions like slavery, torture, and poverty, and rights to services. Human rights ensure that people are able to participate in the life of a society and live a life of dignity. Now let us compare international humanitarian law and international human rights law. In terms of origins, the international humanitarian law started in 19th century under Henry Dunant and the ICRC. The human rights law emerged after World War II under the United Nations as a branch of international law. The UDHR was created in 1948 but translated in 1966 into two covenants, the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights and the International Covenant on Economic, Social, and Cultural Rights, and other treaties that followed. In terms of temporal scope of application, IHL applies exclusively in armed conflict, from the start of the armed conflict to the cessation of hostilities, until an agreement is reached. The human rights law applies in peacetime and during armed conflict. Going to the geographical scope of application, IHL is extraterritorial in reach, based on regional and international courts. Human rights law, geographical scope of application remains unsettled or not yet fully defined in the case of the use of force under the human rights norms. Under personal scope of application, IHL protects civilians and combatants and hoards the combat or those combatants who are no longer participating in hostilities. Human rights law applies to all persons within the jurisdiction of the state. In terms of parties, international humanitarian law binds all the parties. International human rights law binds the state in terms of its obligations towards individuals under its jurisdiction. However, this does not bind non-state actor groups. With exception of non-state actor groups that has a stable control of a territory. In terms of substantive scope of application, under IHL, other human rights aspects like freedom of the press, right to assembly, to vote, to strike, and others are not included in the IHL. However, use of force is allowed and internment is not prohibited and that there is no judicial review of the lawfulness of the detention. Under human rights law, it does not include status of combatants and prisoners of war.
or protection of the ICRC emblem users and the legality of specific weapons. Also, law enforcement is based on capture rather than killed situation with the use of force as a last resort. And in under human rights law, every detainee has the right to judicial review regarding the lawfulness of his or her detention. Also under the substantive scope of application, it can be noted that both IHL and IHRL has a common prohibition of torture, rules for human or humane treatment of detainees, conditions in detention centers, and fair trial. Under the conflict of laws and complementarity of IHL and IHRL, in IHL, Lex Specialist is applied to regulate the conduct of hostilities. IHRL, Lex Generalist is applied. In terms of implementation, IHL is monitored by ICRC. Cases of IHL is prosecuted by the ICC or the International Criminal Court, domestic courts, and ad hoc international criminal tribunal. On the other hand, implementation of human rights law can be done by the National Human Rights Commission and other independent bodies. Cases of IHRL are prosecuted by the national court, regional courts, but not the ICJ or the International Court of Justice, since this is not open to individuals but only to the states. However, states can bring to ICJ cases of individuals and not vice versa. Now, how does international humanitarian law and international human rights law apply? Let's take, for example, the recent case of 2017 in the Marawi crisis in the Philippines. As you can see, in times of peace, you have human rights law coming into force. And in times of war, you have the international humanitarian law. Under IHL, any unjust treatment of children by the military who may be suspected as part of the non-state actor groups should be protected. It is also not allowed that aerial bombing of religious and historical buildings should be done as military targets. However, there are allegations of break-ins and looting in private houses by military officers. There are also harassment and use of force in checking and interviewing civilians as part of identifying civilians and those who may be involved with the non-state actor group. These cases is where human rights and IHL come into effect. Under human rights law, we have economic, social, and cultural rights, right to education, right to work, right to family life. We also have civil and political rights, like freedom of association, freedom of the press, freedom of conscience. And under international humanitarian law, we have protection and care of the wounded and sick, protection of civilians for the effect of hostilities, regulation of means and methods of warfare, and provision of humanitarian relief. But both laws work together in terms of protecting the right to life, prohibition of torture and ill treatment, non-discrimination, and respect of judicial guarantees. More examples in the Marawi crisis in the Philippines. Whereas, the military investigates human rights complaints by the civilians. Another is the appeal of the civilians to stop martial law abuses in Marawi, mainly human rights abuses. In conclusion, in any situation, whether it is an armed conflict or non-armed conflict, international human rights law is applied especially basic human rights that are also guaranteed in a country's constitution and domestic laws. In an armed conflict, international humanitarian law applies. At the very least, common Article 3 is applied. This guarantees the right to life and dignity through the right against torture and right to humane treatment in the detention center and access to fair trial of anyone who may be put under the state's detention laws. I hope this video have explained to you a comparison of the international human rights law and the international humanitarian law. Thank you.